this story in general. Okay. So Lorenzo Ferrer was a man who came to Lincolnton in 1839 under very mysterious circumstances. Our book project researched that very intensively for two years in order to make some pretty amazing conclusions. We discovered that Jean Lafitte faked his death in the 1820s in the Caribbean. He hid for a time in Cuba with the help of some friends. Uh, once the cotton boom came about in Mississippi uh, in the early 1830s, he decided to move inland using the new name Lorenzo Ferrer. Uh, lived in Mississippi for several years, but friends that he made in Mississippi uh, from the Henderson family actually convinced him to land in Lincolnton, North Carolina in 1839. Uh, and so our project covers how we made all of those discoveries, um, all based on primary documents that we found in libraries and on artifacts that we had uh, verified by experts. So we didn't base this on old newspaper accounts or hearsay or my mama once told me. Uh, this was based on solid research um, that we were able to verify with uh, primary documents. What is What were you said some of the biggest documents and the biggest clues that really unlocked this story? Well, we needed to determine that the Lorenzo Ferrer we found in Mississippi was the same man who came to mm -hmm. Lincolnton, and we were able to prove that very quickly when we found a document that indicated a woman named Louisa was with him in Mississippi. That was the name of his very beautiful mistress who came to Lincolnton with him. Her age here in Lincolnton lined up exactly with the age on the document in Mississippi. She was around 17 years old there, and when she came here, she died at a very young age, and both of those dates line up, and we know from that document that this was the same man. So before you two really uh, went investigating, was this just kind of a myth, a rumor, or was this not even a story before you two uncovered it? No, it was a very popular legend, mm -hmm. um, a legend that had been here in Lincolnton for more than 100 years. Even before Mr. Ferrer died, there were whispers that he was the pirate Jean Lafitte. And then after his death, those whispers became loud voices. And the story has persisted till this day. When you, you uh, um, so Jean Lafitte wasn't just a pirate. He seemed like he was, like, a, compare him to other pirates. So Lafitte came very late in the game as far as traditional piracy, right? So the, the golden age of piracy, when we think of pirates like Blackbeard, for instance, it was over really sort of in the early to mid-1700s. Lafitte didn't enter the game until the 1800s, and so he was already operating very far outside the bounds of traditional piracy. What Lafitte was more so than just a pirate, however, was a businessman. At the height of his... Um, popularity and success. He was one of the 10 wealthiest men in America. Clue or first thing that you had about this story that really sparked your attention? One of the very first and most exciting discoveries that we made uh, was in the Princeton University Library. Uh, we had gone up there because we knew that Jean Lafitte's lawyer, Edward Livingston, had his papers uh, all preserved there. And we suspected that um, there were well-placed friends in Lafitte's life who were gonna help him to make the, uh, the escape at the end that he made. And so we drove to New Jersey to, uh, to see what we could find. And what we discovered there was astonishing. Um, there are letters there between Livingston and Lafitte's dear friend, uh, a man named Arsène Latour, who was living in Cuba at the time. And we found evidence in those letters that Livingston and Latour um, were hiding a man, helping a man to hide down in Cuba. This would have been roughly 1829, uh, who they were calling Maison Rouge. And that was important because, uh, and a lot of, all of other scholars would not have picked up on this, Lafitte, when he lived in Galveston, had a very famous house that he built called, and it was red, the red house, but in French, it's called Maison Rouge. Ooh. And so they were using the name of his house to refer to him in code in these letters because Jean Lafitte was supposed to be dead. And so that discovery in Princeton, um, it's a very 
uh, highbrow sort of research library, um, we just about got thrown out because we hollered a little bit when we discovered the Maison Rouge letter. We and hollered so, more than a little bit. Yeah, we got shushed, but uh, it's okay because we uh, we discovered what we what we went there to find. So that, as far as documents go, that was one of the most exciting. Uh, let's talk about the excitement. Uh, how how long of a project has this been, and how much fun has this been for you two? Oh, loads of fun. Mm -hmm. We researched for almost two years. The actual mm -hmm. writing took about four months once we realized we had enough for the book. However, we kept the roads hot. Going back and forth, we covered seven states from as far away as Austin, Texas, all the way up to Princeton. Um, lots of stops in between. Um, lots of crazy things happened. Mm -hmm. There was... Um, a family of wild pigs in the middle of the road in Texas who rounded, we rounded a curve one day and there they were and they didn't look like they wanted to get out of the road. Mm -hmm. um, so we were, were in a bit of a standoff for a few minutes, but finally we won. Mm -hmm. The pigs wandered on across the field and all was well. Yeah. We had some great adventures we along did. the way. So um, uh, just because we, even though we set it out there, uh, I am going to adjustment here. I want us to go through one more time because then I'll have two different angles to make sure this is for sure going to work. Uh, I want us to go through, let's see if I can get this to stay. They drove all the way to Austin to disprove something. <laughs> to disprove something. <laughs> to disprove something. something. <laughs> yes. So what were you disproving? Um, we were going out there to look at muster rolls um, of a battle to make sure that Lorenzo Ferrer's name was not on it. And so um, we drove all the way to Austin, Texas to prove that something was not true. And was it not true? It was, it was not, not true. true. We were there right. you go. <laughs>